Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the latest and greatest updates from some of your very favorite emulators, including Simu, Yuzu, RPCS3 and Xenia. Before I made this video, I asked you guys what games you would like to see featured, and while I was able to test some of those games, I wasn't able to test them all, so if there are any I don't include in this video, please do let me know it down below in a comment, and as always, if I have the ability to test it on any of these specific emulators, I will do so absolutely no problem. Now there's a hell of a lot to look at in this video, so let's jump straight into it and take a look at all of the latest changes coming to CMU in its latest 1.18.1 .1 version. Now if you're not aware of it, CMU Emulator releases one week early for its Patreon supporters. This means that this 1.18.1 .1 release is going to be free for everyone on the coming Friday the 17th of April. This new release brings with it fixes for several popular games, one for example is a Pokken Tournament. Thanks to a fix to a GX2 swap scan buffer, this game no longer vertex explodes with OpenGL, and on top of this, thanks to added support for fast color clears on Vulkan, this game is also now rendered at least semi-correctly using this new API. Unfortunately, even with these changes, the game is still not rendered perfectly, however, at least it's now in a playable state on the emulator once again. Thanks to even more improvements to the Vulkan API, Smash Bros has seen its shadow rendering fixed thanks to added support for rendering depth range. We've also seen improvements to the debugger and patch support. On top of this, the DSU client controller now supports mapping the touch field as an input or a button. So for example, if you're using a DualShock 4 controller, the track or touchpad is now going to be mappable within the emulator as an input. Moving on over to Yuzu, these guys have given us another pretty significant update in the form of a brand new virtual memory manager. These changes have significantly reduced the amount of system RAM that Yuzu uses. By this graph, you can see that games like Diablo 3, Fire Emblem Warriors, Luigi's Mansion 3, Pokemon Let's Go, Pokemon Sword and Shield, and Super Mario Odyssey are using between 40 to 60% less RAM than previous. This new Virtual Memory Manager should affect every game you play on this emulator, so for anyone with a low RAM amount like 4 or 8 gigabytes, you can expect drastically improved game stability. This Virtual Memory Manager was also the precursor to Project Prometheus, which is a brand new update hoping to drastically boost performance levels on practically every game on this emulator. We've been given a few previews of this new project, here we have Super Smash Bros Ultimate running at 20 22 frames per second on early access 346 and here we have Smash Ultimate running on Project Prometheus at 60 frames per second locked. This benchmark was taken from a laptop containing an i7 7700HQ and a GTX 1060. Based off these performance numbers, Project Prometheus seems to be a performance enhancing beast. While we don't have our hands on with Prometheus yet, at least in any way I can showcase, the Yuzu team have now thankfully made Animal Crossing New Horizons playable on the emulator. It does require a mod to get into gameplay and it also has a few graphical issues like the darkened depth haze you can see off in the distance. Otherwise this game is now considered playable from start to finish on this emulator. Staying on the topic of games that are now playable from start to finish, thanks to improved graphical output and render fixes to the game's overworld adventure mode, Mario Tennis Aces is now considered playable also. With all this improved game compatibility and the impending release of Project Prometheus, I really cannot wait for it to release so I can showcase to you guys exactly what it is and what it does. For now, let's move swiftly along and take a look at some changes to RPCS3. Thanks to the restructuring of Vulkan Render Pass scopes, many titles on this PS3 emulator have seen a big jump in performance. The Last of Us is just one great example of this performance boost, with its frame rate moving up by about 5 to 6 frames per second thanks to this render pass update. God of War 3 is similarly affected, and paired with the relaxed Z Call Sync, which I showcased in my last RPCS3 video, this title has never been as performant as it is right now on the emulator. As with God of War, Red Dead Redemption has also seen a nice little performance boost of 5 to 8 frames per second again. This is when you Using the latest master build when paired with relaxed Zekal. Yet another title and one of my very favourite games on the PlayStation 3 to receive a big performance boost is Ratchet & Clank Tools of Destruction. 
This and many of the other Ratchet & Clank games have seen a lot of love from the RPCS3 devs in the past few months, with Tools of Destruction having its physics and vertex explosion issues now fixed in the latest master builds. Unfortunately, these games can still not be considered playable due to extreme slowdowns in areas just like this one when populated with many enemies. Do remember that this is running on an 8700K clocked at 4.6 GHz, so your performance will vary vary depending on the power of your own CPU. As I said, many of the Ratchet & Clank PlayStation 3 games have seen big improvements in the latest master builds. For example, in the game you're watching now, Ratchet & Clank Quest for Booty, its physics issues have been completely solved, meaning you no longer fall through the ground in any of the areas as soon as you load into them. While performance in Nexus is vastly better than it previously was, it does still have this strange lighting vertex explosion issue, apparently due to an RSX problem in the emulator. Regardless, it's really cool to see all of the improvements to these Ratchet and Clank titles since these are by far some of my favourite games on the PlayStation 3. Now, as many of us know, one of the downsides of RPCS 3, especially for games like Red Dead Redemption, God of War and The Last of Us, is basically its necessity for a powerful high core amount CPU. Unfortunately, these games may never be playable on a CPU that has 4 cores or a lower Thankfully, at least due to the efforts of AMD and their Zen CPUs, these high core count and powerful chips are becoming much more available for the average user. Last, but by certainly no means least, we've also seen some very nice improvements to Xenia in both its Master and Canary versions. While performance and stability has gotten a lot better since last I covered Xenia, one of the most key additions is one that only took place very recently. This is the addition of a persistent disk-based shader cache. Many games have also seen vastly improved game compatibility. Red Dead Redemption, for example, now has drastically improved stability and performance, and on top of this, they have also fixed the issue with looping audio or missions failing to trigger at the correct times. Xenia Canary also now has support for many Unreal Engine games, such as Gears of War 1, 2, and 3, and this game, Lost Odyssey, which many of you have requested me to test in the past. Judging by user reports on the Xenia Canary and Xenia Discord servers, this game is in a very playable state with performance levels being very good even on a moderate hardware. It does have a few audio issues and I did encounter a few device lost errors, otherwise the game was fairly enjoyable to play. Other titles such as Gears of War 1, 2 and 3 are also very enjoyable to play, especially when you disable VSync in the emulator's config file, allowing you to play these games at 60 frames per second. Please remember that in order to play any of these Unreal Engine games, you are required to use the Xenia Canary branch. You'll find a link for that and its Discord down in this video's description. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts has also seen a very nice improvement to its render quality, with its grass and foliage issues now being completely solved on top of performance issues we were previously seeing. Obviously, it's still not perfectly rendered as you can see by those vertex explosions over there, but regardless, it's still really nice to see a progression in the Xbox 360 emulation scene. Due to the amount of people who ask me about the compatibility of Red Dead Redemption, in the next few days, I'm going to be making a comparison video where I look at the differences in emulation between Red Dead Redemption on Xenia versus Red Dead on RPCS3. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to see that video as soon as it's released. On top of that, I also plan to do in-depth looks at the brand new virtual memory manager which was just added to Yuzu, and on top of that, as soon as Project Prometheus is released in the next few weeks, you can expect to see a hell of a lot of benchmarking videos from me showing you just how much performance has improved in the games on this emulator. On top of this, and as I said both at the start of this video and in my community post a few days ago, I'm going to be taking a look at each of these emulators individually to see what games have improved and by how much. As I also said, if there are any games you would like to see me test out, please, please do not be afraid to leave a comment down below this video and if I can get that game and test it, I will do so absolutely no problem at all. Again, if you have any questions about settings used in any of the games displayed in this video, I will leave a link to my own Discord server down in this video's description, so if you have any questions that need answering as fast as possible, head on over there and ask them, we will help you as best we possibly can.
For now at least, that's going to be it for this video. Once again guys, thank you all very much for checking it out. I greatly appreciate your support. As always, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.